Bible study today. We shall have a special training session on evangelism by Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui. I pray we'll rise up. I pray we'll wake up. You know, if you think about it, the people that used to do morning cry years ago, no more. The people that used to preach in the buses years ago, they do that no more. The people that used to knock on doors, and people even identified them with Jehovah's Witnesses because they were passionate. They do that no more. The people that anybody they meet and they say good morning, good afternoon, the very first thing that will come out of their mouth will be, are you born again? Are you preparing for the coming of Christ? Any conversation, they will turn it to seek into souls to get them saved. They do that no more. Today, they are passionless. The world has taken their passion away. And the things of the world have taken their passion, their desire, and the urgency of getting so saved has taken that away from them. But to get so saved through repentance and faith in Christ, all that they have forgotten the mind of Christ, the spirit of Christ, the attitude of Christ is implanted in us. We will have the passion and the pursuit and the power and the progress of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll seek for it. We'll demand for it. We'll pray for it until the very passionate pursuit of Christ is implanted into every one of us in Jesus' name. My friends, I want to ask you a question I never asked you before. Are you really sure if you died today, you will go to heaven? And he says, yes. And then you go on, on what basis? How can you be sure? How do you know? And then he tells you, and you say, my friend, I'm going to tell you something. That is not enough to get you to heaven. In our preaching, if you are prayed, if I told them repent, they'll say, that's deeper life doctrine. We don't want to hear that. If in your presentation of the gospel, you say, I come with good news. Well, the good news, Jesus died for you. That's not the end of the good news. They have to recognize that Jesus paid the price for the people who are willing to repent, who are willing to come out of their sins, who are willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and stay away from their sins. If you're going to get to heaven, this is what it takes. The Lord wants us to come out and to live for this and to live for salvation, the salvation of souls, that if we have any connection with anybody at all, it is the connection of the privilege of telling them about their salvation. We mustn't fall into the trap of just saying, come to Christ, that's not enough. If they come with their sins, they have not come. If they come with some belief, they have not come. If they come with superstition, they have not come. If they come without dropping all their transgressions, all their iniquities, all their sins, they have not really come. It says, cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that died, says the Lord God, wherefore turn yourselves and leave ye. He wants us to be totally turned unto the Lord and to live thereby. The greatest profit you can make on this side of heaven is the profit of souls. Souls coming to the Lord. Souls knowing the Lord through you. Souls getting out of darkness, coming into the light, coming out of the wickedness, and coming into the grace of God, into the righteousness of God, and for those people to be added into the book of life. Passion for your own soul. Passion for the people that are near you. Passion for all members of the church. 
compassion for the new converts. As we reach out to them, we're not after their money. We're not after their position. We're not after anything they have. We're after their souls to be saved. And this is the passion the Lord is requesting, requiring from you and from me. Passion for souls that we run after them. We preach to them. We pray for them. We fast for them. We do everything so that they will come out of sin, come to Christ the Savior, and they'll be kept in salvation. Passion is very important. Passion produces passionate people. When you have passion, you'll be seen as a passionate person. Passion compelled Moses to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. He forsook all the rewards he could have had because he was passionate. Let my people go. It was passion that moved David to save Israel from the Philistines. He actually put his life in his hand and he said, this uncircumcised Philistine, I'll bring him down. Because the Philistines will not overcome, will not defeat, will not destroy the children of Israel. The king told him, you cannot do it. His brother asked him, what are you doing here? It was passion that made the man David focused. I must deliver the nation from the enemy, the Philistines. Think about Nehemiah. That was a passionate man. To forsake all the luxury of the palace and to forsake all the ease of the palace and then to run out and reach out to his people and pray and fast and seek the opportunity to reach them. Passionate Nehemiah forsook everything so that the glory of the nation can come back again and think of Ezekiel pleading with the children of Israel to get them saved passion it was passion that drove Paul the apostle to seek the salvation of the lost at the highest price at the highest sacrifice you remember his prayer his wish he said I could wish that I myself were cursed from Christ, that my kinsmen will be saved. That's the passion that made him to say that his life wasn't anything that was considering false. It was to be passionate and reach out to the people and to get them saved. That's the passion the Lord requires of us. I pray we'll rise up. I pray we'll wake up. I pray God will wake us up. He'll wake me up. He'll wake you up. He'll wake every member up. And he'll wake all our preachers up in Jesus' name.